It's good to see you again. I'm doing this tour from my home. Yes, I'm going to read a book for you. Hello, Lisa John. So, so is uh, probably the shortest greeting in Chinese language. It's just a one word that means uh, morning. This is where we finished the last time. Hello, Laurie. This is where we finished the last time. The leaders from different countries. And this poster was uh, published uh, in 1950. Last time I didn't get this one because the caption is uh, too little. And uh, later I found out that uh, this is uh, a leader from Poland. Well, interestingly, in this poster, there is no Cuban leader. Because, look. Oh, this was published in 1953, not 1950. 1953. But then, I guess because uh, Cuba was uh, still in a old autocracy. Castro was not in power then. That's why. That's probably why. 1953, no Cuba. This book has uh, seven different uh, stages of time. And last time we used the one hour to cover only the first time period. And now we're getting into the second time period. The second time period is uh, much shorter. It's only two to three pages. Okay, John, thank you for your verification. Mm. All right, let's have a look. This is uh, 1954 and 1956. Let me read the text for you. During this period, the nation's uh, political situation was relatively stable and a steadily improving economy allowed increasingly greater numbers of people to enjoy a peaceful life. The contents of uh, propaganda posters of the time were mainly concerned with heightening industrial and agricultural production and with the promotion of uh, education and family life. The influence of the Russian constructivist style became increasingly common in propaganda posters. Although New Year poster designs uh, still drew on the techniques used within the Shanghai Daily posters of the 1930s, the pictures nevertheless carried a new political propaganda message. Let's start from here, the first one. Our friends are all over the world. And this one, take the road of uh, cooperation. Let me know if you find something interesting in those posters. The clothing is so detailed. Yes. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, the phone just uh, slipped uh, off uh, the gimbal. Uh, let me make sure it's uh, steady on the gimbal. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, as the general introduction just said, it's more about uh, people's uh, happy life because in 1949, China was uh, liberated by the Communist Party and uh, took a few years to go through some uh, initial reforms. But you know, actually during the entire period of 1949 to 1979, there were just uh, reforms and movements 
uh, campaigns one after another, the characteristic of Chinese life during Mao's era. <clears throat> All right, this is a, a gala night. It was published in 1954 in the Tiananmen Square. You can almost hear the music. You know what, there's an important thing I want to point out during this time period. <clears throat> uh, last time, maybe I touched on that. That is, uh, between 1949 and 1952, there was a major land reform in which uh, the farmers with uh, properties <clears throat> were deprived of their land and uh, properties which were allocated to the poor farmers. Something phenomenal. That was to 1952. But you know what? That policy was quickly abandoned again. In the year 1953, the central <clears throat> government, of course, uh, <clears throat> with the Chairman Mao as uh, the helmsman, decided to revert the land system to something more communist or more traditional. That is, uh, all farmers were put into collectives. See, so 1949, 1952, the poor farmers, they got that land from rich farmers. They were able to grow what they wanted on their land. So they lived then a relatively good life, but until 1953. That was just a very short period of the time. <clears throat> Strive for the fulfillment of the five-year plan. The first five-year plan of China was drawn in 1953. <clears throat> Not from the beginning year, 1949, from 1953, the first five-year plan was drawn. And now we are in the 14th five-year plan. This is actually a model also uh, they learned from uh, Russia or then the Soviet Union. And this one says, knowledge is power. This sounds universal. And uh, I think uh, the first one who proposed this idea in the book is a British uh, thinker, Francis Bacon, as early as in the end of uh, 16th century. But that idea is easy to accept. Here, this is a, a state visit paid by Hu Minh to China, and this poster was published in 1956. All right, this is a big one on the right, one page. Wish you win merits before coming back. So this is a, a ceremony held in the village to send a young man to join the army. This is interesting here. This uh, boy, there's a, this armband with two Chinese characters. And uh, it means a uh, picket. That means uh, this boy then was uh, a picket member. Hmm. And I also talked about uh, this kind of uh, red tie Chinese uh, uh, school kids after grade three where? And last time when I was uh, just walking around in this uh, village area, I saw actually a parade. In the beginning, I wondered what uh, actually that parade was really for. And people actually were playing 
you know, some uh, music. They uh, beat drums, they play cymbals, and uh, uh, that was actually a parade. So later I realized that it was actually the, a ceremony like, like this one. It was a young man in that village who was, uh, you know, uh, enrolled into the army. So they actually held a, a mini ceremony, a parade. To, uh, it was a group of people who escorted the, the young man. On the way, they played music. So this is, uh, this is what I just saw just, um, you know, the other day. And uh, well, here, this is uh, the poster. <clears throat> Wish you win merits. Hello, everyone. Ho, Maureen, Mark, Roger, Alan. Uh, this uh, one says, uh, looking for the dead outlet. Have a look. This is uh, mainland China, the People's Republic of China. Of course, this is uh, Chiang Kai-shek and uh, Taiwan, the US. Ha, huh. looking for the dead outlet. This is a dead alleyway. Uh, let me rest my gimbal on the on the desk. It's better. <clears throat> Actually, Taiwan Island is uh, very close to mainland China. You can see the pages of. Uh, on this book, uh, off bind. Uh, <laughs> All right, the next one here. The next one here is something foreign. That is uh, giant waves of a Suez Canal, published in 1956. So you can search about this. Swiss crisis, or maybe the second Arab-Israeli war. And there was interesting episode in that uh, uh, story. That is, uh, the Western allies, today's uh, firm allies, the U.S. and uh, the Great Britain, and also France, during this crisis, they were actually kind of in the tension between themselves because uh, then it was originally kind of a conflict between Israel and uh, Arabian countries as Israel just uh, was, you know, uh, starting to settle uh, in their new land in the Middle East. There were some conflicts and then was uh, at one time with also uh, Egypt here. And uh, at that time, the, Egypt, the Egyptian leader Nasser was coming into power. And uh, somehow uh, France and uh, UK also joined the conflict together with uh, Israel. But that military operation was actually stopped with the threatened and stopped by the US. So you can find it out. But in China, and also in, uh, of course, uh, in Egypt, this was promoted as a, a great victory and a personal victory of uh, especially uh, Nasser and also uh, the relative uh, group behind him that is uh, socialism or communism. But let me be also uh, clear on one thing that is Nasser, he personally was actually uh, not a communist, and he were actually was against the communism. But, you know, this, uh, I, I better leave it to you for you to search. And uh, I'm trying to just uh, throwing out some minnows for you to catch uh, a whale or two. Okay, Virginia, let, let me pay... Focus on the page. That's a good idea. If you like that, let me know which is better. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. All right. I try to not touch too much. 
Actually, this is the same game bow that I used the last time for this tour. I don't know why this time uh, it doesn't work so well. All right, here is uh, Nasser again. The title of this poster says, Colonists Go Back Home. And this one, Fly to the Moon. According to Chinese uh, myth, there are rabbits who are the companies to a goddess called Chang'e who lives on the moon. So children here are riding a rocket with actually a monkey huh, from the earth to the moon. This is uh, 1956. And here, nuclear weapon extortion by the US. And uh, I like the title of this poster. It says, uh, it is people to destroy the bomb, not the bomb to destroy people. <laughs> Actually, this kind of reminds me of uh, uh, what uh, the old man said last time when I interviewed uh, on a tour uh, who actually fought in the Korean War. And he said, uh, we Chinese people uh, could win the war because of uh, uh, mainly three things. First of all, uh, we are not afraid of death. And second, we have uh, numbers. And third is uh, when they sleep, we march. When they take a rest, we fight. When they, you know, basically when they are, you know, just doing something that uh, an ordinary human is supposed to do, you just uh, do what is uh, hard uh, and uh, unexpected to fight. This is uh, the spirits of what that old man said. I think this is uh, something that reminds me of that. All right, now we quickly enter the, to the next uh, period, 1957 to 1962. You know what, so it's a, I know it's a bit dark here and uh, there is actually a light yeah, here. So let me know if uh, that works better with you. But the thing is uh, sometimes, you know, that light maybe casts uh, a, a spotlight that turns out to be too shiny sometimes. But uh, let me try the best, okay? Uh, I know it's a bit dark, so hopefully this is better. And this is 1957 to 1962. In this period, the political movements started to mobilize public opinion. Almost overnight, nearly one in 10 Chinese intellectuals were labeled as rightists in 1957. And it became class enemies of the people. Momentous uh, developments uh, soon followed, the Great Leap Forward and the People's Communes. During the period, many caricatured images and cartoon style posters were created by masses of workers and farmers. Many beautiful posters were printed on poor paper with an outstanding style that was typical of the Chinese. Many of the characters have uh, naively exaggerated the facial expressions, mirroring the zeal and the enthusiasm of the people under Mao's government. China also experienced its most uh, serious uh, famine in the early 1960s as a result of both natural disasters and the mistake of uh, the Great Leap Forward. You may have heard of uh, the last term, the Great Leap Forward. Look, 1957 is uh, the beginning of that Great Leap Forward. So sometimes officially people identify the beginning year of the Great Leap Forward as 1958, but that doesn't really matter that much. Uh, let's have a look what's here. The first poster here, 1959, uh, it says, strive for producing more and a better steel. Yes. You know what, so that is 1959. And uh, in 1957, there was a meeting between then Russian leader, uh, Soviet Union leader, Khrushchev, with the Chinese leader uh, uh, Mao Zedong, 
uh, Chairman Mao in Moscow. Then Chairman Mao went to uh, uh, Soviet Union for the second time to attend the 40th anniversary celebration of uh, the October Revolution of Russia. So last time, I think I made a mistake uh, in telling about the two visits paid by Chairman Mao to Soviet Union. And I was right in that uh, he paid two visits to foreign countries and uh, actually foreign country, not countries, because uh, he only visited Russia and twice. That's it. He didn't go to any other country other than China and Russia. Well, I was not right in the timing and also uh, the intention of uh, the visits. So let me be clear this time. First time he went there in 1949. And uh, last time I said it happened in November, but actually it was in, uh, uh, it was actually in December. And he went there first of all as his first uh, visit after the new China was founded. And also more importantly, maybe, maybe to attend the birthday party, the 70th birthday party of uh, Stalin. This is his first visit. And second visit was paid actually in 1957. And then he met Khrushchev in Moscow for the 40th anniversary of uh, the October Revolution of Russia. All right. So then at that meeting, uh, Khrushchev uh, at that time uh, had an idea that is to overtake the U.S. in economy within 20 years. Although then Soviet Union in terms of the GDP then was only half as much as uh, the U.S. But he thought that uh, they could uh, catch up with uh, uh, the higher rate. And uh, that was the target he set. So on hearing that, uh, Chairman Mao set his target for China. That is uh, to overtake the United Kingdom in the production of uh, steel in 15 years. All right. So this is the background. And uh, their meeting was in 1957. And now you can see the reflection of the po uh, on those posters. And this second poster here on this page says, hail for over fulfilling steel outputs of 10.7 billion tons. And you see, there is a satellite here, right? It looks like a satellite. But actually the first satellite of China, no, this is not satellite. This is a furnace, but looks like a satellite. All right, let's talk about the satellite later thing. This is one poster on the right page. This is a long live the people's commune. Wow, the people's commune. You know what? Uh, people's commune is uh, really bitter. But we can still talk about it later uh, as we see more pages, uh, I mean, posters. And bumper harvest, this is what it says. Bumper harvest. Yes, you know, uh, at that time, a lot of uh, people were identified as uh, the class enemies. Those were the people who, you know, are so-called rightists. Actually, a lot of them were teachers. During that time, there was actually a proposal by the central government for the people to... Uh, uh, advice to give their opinions out. But overnight, those people were labeled as rightists. Actually, that campaign was called 100 uh, Flower Campaign. 100 flowers here suggest uh, the different opinions for people to give. You can give uh, whatever the opinions uh, 
you want uh, in uh, mm, in the social reforms and the, the political system or something. But uh, sadly, those people were victimized very soon. All right. This one says, smash the attack from the rightists to defend socialist construction. This poster was published in 1958. That's the meeting between Mao Zedong and uh, Khrushchev. Actually, uh, Khrushchev, uh, before 1958, uh, two years before that, he actually, at the 20th uh, Congress of uh, the Soviet Union of the Communist Party, he uh, dramatically criticized uh, Stalin. I think uh, this event, uh, along with many others, uh, just uh, made the personal relationship between Mao and Khrushchev worse and worse. You know, in late 1960s, there was a, a split, complete split between uh, China and Soviet Union relationship. So this is where it's... Uh, and when it uh, all started. Celebrate great victory of a socialist reform. This is a parade in the Nanjing Road Street of Shanghai. Have you been to the Nanjing Road Street? If you have been to Shanghai, I'm sure you have been to the Nanjing Road. It's like the Fifth Avenue of New York, I believe. There were Western style buildings built in the uh, colonial age by the, in the British area. People dance, play music, perform dragon dances, lion dances. Yeah, it's a parade. There are two department stores here at this uh, famous uh, interjection. And uh, Yongan Company, that was uh, founded originally by an overseas Chinese uh, merchant. And uh, here at that time, it says uh, the joint business of a Yongan Company of both private and public, uh, both private and public. But there is something in command here. One force has to be in a dominant status. All right, this is uh, still the great leap forward. And here it says, uh, John rides the ox and I'm on the horse. What a shame if he wins the game. It's this one. This is John, a British guy on a on an ox and Chinese holding a big banner, riding a horse. It says in 15 years to overtake and surpass the United Kingdom. This is the same thing, a British guy. 1972, why? Because this was published in 1958 Eight, and one year before that, 1957, the beginning of uh, the Great Leap Forward. In 15 years, that is 1972, this is the results they aimed to achieve. Okay, the next one is uh, make sure the faster speed in our industrial development uh, to catch up and uh, surpass UK. This one. The details on some of these are really incredible. Yeah. Uh, yes, I can understand. Of course. Uh, this is a, a big one on the right again. It says, uh, harvest one after another and leap forward and forward in agricultural production. Corn, 
cotton, wheat, and rice. The numbers are climbing just like a rocket. Here is uh, Nasser again. World people take action to stop U.S. and U.K. aggression, 1958. Actually, you know what? 1958 also saw the founding of uh, a new country in which Egypt and uh, Syria then merged into one called United Arab Republic. But that country lasted only for a very short period of time. No more than four years, it collapsed. So you can find out why and how it happened. This is a Dong Feng Ya Dao Xi Feng. This is another quote from Chairman Mao. It means uh, East winds prevail over West winds. And this one says ban nuclear weapon. Defend the Cuban Revolution. This is uh, 1962. That's right. That's right. This is uh, when Castro was in power. Uh, and actually, 1962 is also the year of a Cuban Missile Crisis. Before that, soon before that, shortly before that, Castro came into power from the previous uh, autocracy. Okay, this is a uh, defend Cuba. Oh, no, this one is a uh, U.S. Army must get out of Taiwan area. I hope a Chinese uh, football player today were able to do that well. Uh, next one. Laboring people of the uh, world unite to send imperialism into tomb. Here's a couple again. Laurie, last time you were interested in the image of uh, another couple who uh, you know, uh, are working in the, in the fields. This time, you can see there are a lot of uh, patterns that are suggestive of uh, northern China. This is the typical pattern on the cloth you find in northern China. There's a portrait of Chairman Mao, and here, double happiness symbolizes uh, the marriage. Bumper harvest is what it says here, and with children. Actually, during the people's communes, believe it or not, couples were not allowed to be together, and children were also kind of uh, separated, and they were attended by uh, special people in schools, the so-called schools then. Unless you are a cadre who could enjoy some privileges, more or less, depending on where you were. Okay, this is a firmly fulfill or overfill 1959 rice production target. That man looks very heroic, a dramatic number on it. This one says, making poems on the blue sky in praise of general line and doing the painting in the, and doing the painting in the land for the happy commune. All right, this one again, Eastern winds prevail over Western winds. And here, there are two entities Soviet Union, world number one. 
China, world number two. And the Soviet Union guy has a mustache, <laughs> all whiskers. We're Chinese, no, uh, because we are yellow, Asian, typical Asian. Huh. And this one is a dragon boat. People are very excited on the dragon boats and uh, the Westerners are dwarfed here. They are stuck in their sluggish economy, crisis, a symbol of a skeleton, and they are looking enviously at the pompous dragon boats by Chinese people. And on the banners, there is one character on each. More, faster, better, cheaper. This one says, let the children grow up in peace. There are three babies, a yellow one, a white one, and a black one. <laughs> Rather cute, yeah. Yeah, it's a, all right, there are more cute babies here. Another gathering of a, a black boy, yellow boy, and a Western girl, white girl. Hmm. Children here, look, this is uh, in the name of uh, Hail to the Bumper Harvest. This is a Hail to the Bumper Harvest. And this one is uh, fortune stars shining overhead. Yes, fortune stars shining overhead. By the way, in China, we don't have fortune cookies. You can go around China and not find a restaurant that features fortune cookies. Fortune cookie is, uh, uh, how to say? Uh, were presented in uh, Chinese restaurant in uh, in Western countries for the purpose of uh, impression. But of course, there is some sense in it because uh, this is a uh, you know we Chinese people do something similar to that, uh, and we like to use uh, symbols to uh, you know say something, represent something. All right, carry out the eight letter agriculture. Constitution for bumper harvest. So here, eight letter agricultural constitution means uh, eight Chinese character law or policy. This one, 1960, everyone takes action to wipe out the four pests. There were two versions of uh, the four pests. The original version has uh, rats, mosquitoes, flies, and in what? Sparrows, the original version. During the Great Leap Forward, Actually, let's say also you can say in the end of uh, the famine, something had to be, you know, found to blame on the famine. So among many others, probably people, uh, the sparrow was the target. There was a movement in China to uh, kill all those uh, sparrows in the sky. Almost everyone was mobilized. People did whatever they could in the ground to make noise, maybe to catch, to shoot, to lay traps, all means to kill the sparrows because they thought the sparrows 
caused the famine. But what came after that was、uh, without sparrows, all the pests infested the lands, which again, <laughs> of course, you can imagine, led to another disaster. So later, some efforts were done to restore those sparrows that at that time were wrongly targeted. How typical! So this is the original version. Well, in the second version, the later version, the sparrow, of course, is replaced by cockroaches. Or sometimes people say lice or cockroaches. Yeah. Anger waves along the bund. The bund is the famous waterfront in the former British colony of Shanghai, by the Huangpu River. There's the river. Shanghai was、uh, opened by the British as a treaty port after the First Opium War in 1840s. This one says more fertilizer from more pigs to obtain high yield grain. Yeah, fat pig. Hmm. This is a、uh, communism is heaven and the people's commune is、uh, the bridge. Yeah, people are、uh, going across the bridge of people's commune to a dreamland on the other side. A farmer, a worker, a farmer, a soldier. And intellectual, the four major forces of Chinese、uh, communist society. This one says, "Long live the general line." Here, the general line refers to the policy, the guideline set forth by the leaders or the leader. Over fulfilled the plan to strive for a whole year harvest, and this one I like. Here it says,、uh, "People's commune is great as the women are liberated thoroughly." Yeah, look in the background, you can see some Chinese、uh, writings, and、uh, they refer to different、uh, places women used to work in. For example, a nursery. A kindergarten, a nursing home, staff canteen. Now they get、uh, liberated in the people's commune. They don't have to be、uh, working in those、uh, places that are typically thought as the jobs for women. Now they are liberated. They can do bigger things. They can work just like men in the field. In the factories, but in this case, it's a woman peasant. She's carrying a rake to the field to work as maybe a man. In that case, in this sense, she is liberated. Huh. Sisters make great、uh, determination to be the pioneers in construction. Here, sisters are、uh, in broad sense, not the blood sisters or the family sisters, just the women in general. Cuba sovereignty never allowed invasion. Published in 1962. March towards the top signs. 1959. Then China received a lot of、uh, support from the Soviet Union. They sent、uh, many、uh, specialists, materials. Weapons, 
to China, and also later China in 1964 tested its first uh, atomic bomb. But uh, those scientists who uh, made a contribution to the first atomic bomb for China mainly came from Western countries. But uh, the most famous figures, they actually were born in China and they went to school. Uh, they all went to Tsinghua University in, in Beijing. But later they went to Western countries to achieve their academic uh, climax before they came back to China to make their contribution to the first atomic bomb and later the satellites. The first satellites launched by Chinese happened in the year 1970. So there was, uh, you know, the proposals of Chairman Mao to change the fate of Chinese people uh, through science. And here is uh, the symbol of our friendship between China and the Soviet Union it says, uh, the friendship between Soviet Union and China lasts a long spring for 10,000 years. Or the peaches. Yeah, in Chinese uh, culture, a peach is the symbol of longevity. That's why, of course, pigeons, peace. Okay, look, we are coming to the third stage of today's tour. We have made more progress. Huh? All right, 1963 to 1964. This is uh, the years before the Cultural Revolution. Cultural Revolution broke out in 1966. And uh, here it says the Cold War between East and the West it was probably at its worst from 1963 to 1965. And the promotion of opposition to US imperialism was the main focus for propaganda publications. Many great posters dealing with uh, the Vietnam War were issued by Shanghai People's Fine Art Publishing House. In China, the domestic economy was gradually improved, but the comparatively stable social situation didn't last long, however. Never forget the past uh, bitterness and the class struggle became the subjects for daily political education. This is a household uh, name and image in China. His name is uh, Lei Feng. He is known by this name. Of course, his original name is a different one. But in the world, actually now in rural China, I have realized that uh, people in their, let's say, 50s and 60s today, they usually they do have uh, two different names. And oftentimes I have seen that uh, their names are oftentimes uh, different. For, for instance, one in the formal identity. The other one in, let's say, maybe spoken unofficial uh, usage, and uh, they are usually, you know, sometimes they are close, sometimes they are very different. I suspect uh, the close uh, ones are usually the misspelling or the miswriting. The other day I consulted with my wife uh, in order to know why. She told me because uh, probably because uh, of the, the lack of education and uh, the illiteracy back, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago, those uh, scribes in the office oftentimes made a mistake in writing people's names. That's why today, a lot of people's names in rural China, they have, you know, for example, they have uh, their uh, official name and uh, unofficial name in very small difference. And you suspect that they are probably just spelled wrongly. Okay, here it says, uh, do what Chairman Mao says. But sometimes they have just two different names. In that case, they are just purposely two different names. This one says, uh, learn from Lei Feng to be proletarian revolutionary soldier. Yeah, 
you can see he is a soldier. Lei Feng is a soldier, and uh, his uh, traits, personal traits, are selflessness, hardworking, daring to, and uh, coming forward to do whatever Chairman Mao says and asks you to do. This is what it says on the poster. Okay. Firmly supports uh, U.S. Black people's uh, justice uh, struggle. 1963. Yeah, this you probably, for Americans and also a lot of people around America, uh, society know much better than I do. Here, all the people of the world unite to oppose U.S. Uh, imperialists, our common enemy. U.S. imperialism must be defeated and is bound to lose. Can you spot out uh, who this figure is? Have a close look at the face. Uh, Nixon? No. Too early for Nixon. Uh, thank you, River. Uh, that is 1964. It says U.S. imperialism is the common enemy of uh, world peace. Well, wow, I have heard this a lot these days also. Lyndon Johnson, I think. Do you agree with me? Yes. That's right, Cheryl. Lyndon Johnson. All right. Let me adjust my gimbal because I have uh, been holding it uh, for a while, and uh, I need to, to have, give a rest to my right arm. This one. Fight and will fast. Oh no, fight and win fast to defeat US invaders. Wow, wow. Everyone is a soldier. Everyone carries a gun a rifle, a bayonet. Really? <laughs> the surrendered soldiers. Well, Korean War. This is in the background of a Korean War. U.S. imperialism get out of South Korea, 1965. Mm -hmm. South Korea, you're not wrong. It's not North Korea, South Korea. Oppressed people united to oppose U.S. imperialism. Deeply developed the movement to save the materials and push the industrial production to a new level. During that time, there were different uh, exemplary cities for both uh, industry and uh, agriculture for other cities and people in other, you know, rural areas and cities to learn from. This is also a very typical uh, practice in China. They set up a model and encourage people to learn from uh, the model, either a person or an organization or a city 
different entity. Here is again, uh, firmly support U.S. people against the U.S. imperialism invading Vietnam. Wow, we're efficient today. 1966 to 1971, this is uh, the Cultural Revolution time. Cultural Revolution lasted for 10 years. It ends in 1976, soon after Chairman Mao passed away. All right, let's see what the general introduction here says. The Cultural Revolution broke out in the summer of 1966. Mao's personal cult had uh, finally reached uh, its height. In poster artworks of the time, Chairman Mao became the red sun, shining down on sunflowers, symbolizing the people. The creation of propaganda posters was gradually, was greatly encouraged with most being printed and distributed by the masses. Many unique woodcut design posters were made by art school students in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Jilin, and Hangzhou. The posters were of these years featured Mao for the most part, although some also depicted the striking images of Liu Shaoqi and Deng Xiaoping. Common themes included the supporting world revolution against US imperialism, the rejection of Russian revisionism and the relocation of students to the countryside. That's right. Cultural Revolution poster arts represents the pinnacle of Chinese poster history, both in terms of quality and quantity of outputs. However, most of them were destroyed after Lin Biao. By the way, this is Lin Biao. The official successor appointed by Mao died in an air crash following his failure to oust Mao in 1971. Here in this book, you get, you know, some information that you don't not usually get in the general publications. For instance, here at last, it says, uh, Ling Biao, the official successor appointed by Mao, died in an air crash following his failure to oust Mao in 1971. This is something usually you do not get to hear in the official accounts. Something that can be only suggested, but of course, it doesn't mean that uh, people don't know. Yes, to some degree, yes, people know about this, yeah, as a matter of fact. Okay, let's have a look at the posters anyway. I follow Chairman Mao closely and march forward. Long live the correct, glorious Chinese Communist Party celebrate its 50th birthday. That's right, this is uh, the year 1971, right? You know what, 50 years ago, that is 1921, the first meeting of the Communist Party of China was held secretly in a house in the then French colony of Shanghai. That's right, this is the 50th birthday of the party. And then Mao and his uh, appointed successor for one stage, Lin Biao holding the red book, standing by Chairman Mao following him. And uh, there were people from all over China cheering, joining the campaign. Really beyond comprehension, let's say. All right, here it says, uh, yo. It says uh, the title of this poster here in translation is a bomb number one capitalist authority in the party. That's right. This reminds me of uh, the headline of an article Chairman Mao endorsed 
as the symbolic beginning of the Cultural Revolution, in which he said, "Bomb the headquarters of the capitalist of the capitalists. Bomb the something like the the office of the the chief office of the capitalists." This is uh, the headline of uh, an article endorsed by Chairman Mao. Usually, this is uh, considered the beginning of the Cultural Revolution. And here it says, uh, "Be especially guarded against uh, careerists, schemers like uh, Khrushchev, to prevent people like him." From usurping the party and uh, the state leaders on different levels, Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao. Because、uh, I told you that before that Khrushchev, first of all, criticized、uh, Stalin, and he later also met the U.S. President、uh, Eisenhower, even at Camp David. And also, personally, there were some exchanges between Chairman Mao and、uh, Khrushchev, all played in to make you know the relationship bad. And here is、uh, the reflection. Wow, the Cultural Revolution is、uh, mainly in red. Yeah, all red. Have a look. It's different from the、uh, other posters we saw earlier, in different colors. Here, red is the subject. Long live victory of a revolutionary lion, represented by Chairman Mao, nineteen sixty-seven. Follow Chairman Mao. Be revolutionary forever. I see that line on the lintel of the entrance of an old house in the village where I live. All will be directed by Chairman Mao. Thought. Chairman Mao thought. And also something between you know the relationship between Stalin, oh no, between Mao and uh, uh, Khrushchev is also that、uh, Mao, you know, after、uh, Stalin passed away, I think he kind of uh, uh, thought he should be the legitimate、uh, successor of、uh, Stalin. Be the leader of the communism in the world, and、uh, because of that, he actually didn't really like uh, uh, Khrushchev in nature. Well, Khrushchev、uh, had a quite, you know, direct、uh, and sometimes aggressive personality. Thank you, John.、Uh, you know, again, as I said, I'm just、uh, throwing out some minnows for you to catch some whales.、Uh, these are some interesting pictures、uh, just、uh, to look at, and、uh, also a good resource for us to、uh, just、uh, reflect on history. Yeah. All right. Let's finish this part. July third and July twenty fourth announcement is Chairman Mao's、uh, great uh, strategic uh, done strategic something. Oh, strategic、uh, layout. Strategic layout 部署 means layout. And、uh, there is a subtitle here says, "Unite all you can unite." In a steady, sharp way, in a steady, sharp, and a fierce way, to、uh, 
smash the small fraction of class enemies. They are holding all the you know, papers endorsed by Chairman Mao to criticize, spot out, criticize, persecute, and flush out all the class enemies. Look, this is a Chinese a cultural revolution, a revolution <laughs> different from The normal definition a revolution suggests. All right, let me see how much we have left here. Uh, now we're in 56 page, and uh, there are 82 pages. You know what? I think we probably need a, a path three, if you don't mind. Uh, look. This is uh, the third, this is the third last uh, period in this book. After this cultural, the first half of the cultural revolution period, there's the second half of the cultural revolution, and then the relative new era after Mao's time. Yeah, uh, from 1979 all the way to, you know, a time that's hard to define, but you know, you can say to now, yeah. All right, guys, uh, hopefully you have uh, learned something and you have been inspired one way or another by those uh, pictures. Okay, so anyway, I think I'm good to do uh, the part three and if you are interested, come back to join me. Uh, thank you for spending the time with me on this uh, tour and uh, let me know if you have any suggestions, any, uh, you know, tips on how I can further my interest and passion after uh, Hegel, all right? Uh, and uh, River, thank you very much. You mentioned uh, buy me a coffee or buy me coffee something i will learn about it it's very good thank you so much thank you very much everyone thank you jane thank you everyone uh until next time it's goodbye thank you